In this video, we begin our NTFS file system overview, uh, which is the type um, of system used on both a desktop and server Microsoft based operating systems. And uh, this is our presentation. NTFS is also a prototype of the latest file system from Microsoft, named REFS. Uh, which supports automatic ongoing integrity checking driven by large, massive arrays of multi-terabyte hard drives uh, common in today's server environments. Uh, but uh, Windows operating system still cannot be booted from um, REFS volume, so NTFS is required for a system drive. NTFS stands for New Technology File System, and this is one of the uh, flagship file systems from Windows. So generally, it supports large volume storage, um, high performance, a system facility that repairs itself. And uh, that means that there is a utility um, on, on, as part of the implementation of file system that can be activated that uh, checks the health and repairs the system as necessary. There are some advanced file level features, security compression and auditing. Um, so compression, uh, both security and um, especially compression uh, has some limitations. So it's not um, um, absolutely widespread, but uh, it's one of the features built into the system. So data security is, of course, the capability to encrypt files and folders. Uh, it supports uh, multilingual support for uh, international uh, uh, systems um, around the world. Uh, fault tolerance um, based on modifications recorded in a special log file. Um, and uh, if the system crashes or something happens to the health of the system, the log file is capable of restoring the disk to a consistent state. So the idea here is that if we have, for example, a file which occupies certain space on disk, of course, it's split into clusters. Let's say that this file here is occupying four clusters on the system. And supposedly during a write into this cluster, for example, uh, something bad is happening and uh, the, the result of this operation is unknown. So there could be some corrupted data or no update at all, or new data is written, which, is, uh, which means everything is okay. So the approach of the log file is that the log file is essentially uh, logging uh, all updates. So the old um, information is preserved here. So this is the old uh, cluster and the new cluster, which is supposed to be replacing information in this cluster, is also placed in the log. And um, the log file, of course, also has the status field uh, that explains how far are we in terms of uh, making this update. Did we preserve the old data? Did we... Uh, already uh, have we already written this new data into the log and eventually did we update this cluster and what was the result of this operation so this question mark now depends on the status in the log file and the log file itself is updated before physical updates to our files uh, so it's a reliable feature that can be used to later uh, check the status and uh, make um, best um, assumptions about what can be done uh, to either complete this operation or roll it back. So both scenarios are possible. So uh, the best uh, case for recovery and uh, restoring the health of the disk uh, would be moving it forward if there is enough information available on how to complete the operation. Otherwise, everything is rolled back and the file is basically restored to its um, initial state as a result of uh, rolling back this update. So that's the idea of the fault tolerance. 
uh, but fault tolerance doesn't happen as we go all the time so basically uh, a a a a separate utility needs to be launched to check the health of the drive and then make repairs as necessary so the, the principles of the system is that all data in ntfs file system is allocated to a file so that kind of suggests that you can view that ntfs is uh, a database of records that themselves are files there are two major parts of course uh, two major kinds of files uh, one is a directory and another one is a file to store data uh, first few sectors of the volume where the ntfs system is installed uh, contains the boot sector which itself contains the boot code so essentially the idea is that we have this ntfs partition and we install ntfs system in this partition the first sector is the boot sector of course the size of this first sector is 512 bytes however uh, it can be configurable it doesn't have to be 512 bytes but on most systems it is 512 bytes and then some sectors can be reserved and um, an operating system may use this reserved space to place more executable code in this space on the NTFS volume you know, to uh, complete the booting uh, when uh, the operating system is booting from this partition. Any sector beyond those reserved uh, sectors, including the boot sector, is considered to be the data area. So this is the data area where the data can be stored. So this is all available for the system to use. Uh, so um, NTFS um, uh, idea, its philosophy is that it's, it doesn't depend on the underlying hardware and it means that it's configurable um, and no longer um, um, a fixed uh, 512 byte size sector. So the cluster size, of course, which is the combination of sectors, can be specified when we are for formatting the volume. And uh, compression features are not available um, unless the cluster size is greater than 4 kilobytes. So 4 kilobytes is really the default um, allocation unit for the cluster. And unless uh, you really know why you would like to change that, I recommend that you uh, don't uh, change this. Earlier in my presentations, I, I formatted one of my thumb drives uh, to contain a FAT system. So here, um, if I try to format this and choose um, NTFS option, then you can see that the default is um, uh, basically 4 kilobyte size um, allocation unit size, which is the cluster size, right? So that just defaults right away to uh, 4 kilobyte size. Now, other options are uh, here. You can uh, change this, but this is the default. And uh, the volume size um, can uh, depend on the size of the cluster that you choose. So uh, if you choose a small cluster size, then uh, you may be limited to only a gigabyte or two gigabytes. And beyond four kilobyte size cluster, you go above two gigabytes. There is no uh, no specific uh, limit on the file size that can be stored. Um, encryption, compression, and recoverability are supported without any additional uh, features uh, that would be required to be installed. This is all natively built in. Um, to the file system and there are flexible permissions uh, which we have already uh, seen uh, the access uh, control lists um, uh, inheritance of permissions from directory to files and uh, uh, this is really what makes it a requirement for a microsoft based operating system uh, windows to use ntfs um, as uh, the file system that 
hosts uh, the uh, the operating system all right so part of that recovery um, uh, process we discussed uh, the log system that logs uh, the changes that are taking place during updates on the drive. In addition to this, there is also transaction log and journaling features. Uh, so basically, besides just system utility uh, that can repair the drive based on the log information, in addition to this, a program, an application or server software that is running on top of NTFS may request um, NTFS uh, to uh, make uh, file updates um, uh, uh, transactional, and this way, an application can control its own transactions and may be able to commit uh, changes if it decides that everything is okay or may attempt to actually undo changes based on the transaction log and change uh, journaling. Both users and application may choose to compress and encrypt files um, on the system without any need for a third party software or additional system components. So this is all based on just the functionality of NTFS uh, features that are already available. So the file is encrypted, uh, compressed during uh, the writing of the file and decrypted uncompressed during the file read operation, which means that uh, no additional information in any uh, shape or form of decrypted uh, plain uh, text uh, version is stored anywhere permanently. Uh, all encryption and decryption and also compression is happening in computer memory, which makes uh, it uh, a secure way of doing this. And uh, of course, uh, when this is happening, it's all transparent to the user. Of course, the user has to uh, present uh, the correct uh, credentials and uh, have decryption uh, key available in order to be able to access the information.